I will have you know that my bandmates constantly make fun of me for the size of this thing. It is ridiculously big. There are a lot of pedals on it. Um, but my, my, my view has always been, as long as I don't have to carry it around, <laughs> then bring them all, you I, know? I appreciate the irony, because I know the story is that when you showed up to the band, you were not a pedal guy. You not, had a tuner. Uh, not at all. And now yeah. you are the pedal guy. Yes. <laughs> well, because, yeah, and it's, and, it's, and it's an interesting thing, because in Foos, and this is his, his maybe, maybe because I wasn't a pedal guy, I never had pedals. You yeah. know? I never played with, I never had a delay my whole life until I joined the Foo Fighters, yeah. you know? Um, and there were songs that needed, like Aurora, you know, needs a very specific delay setting. Yeah. Um, and and different songs. So um, and there in and, and and you know you you, you need a, a phaser for these two songs. You need a flanger here and there. Um, so it just started to grow and grow over the years. And every time we make an album, you know, there's like there's mine gear that's kind of inspiring. You yeah. When you're recording and stuff. And so there'll be like you'll get some pedal and. Use it on like three songs on your new record. And you're like, well, I got to put that on the and board. You know, you know what I mean? So it's been a lot of that over the years. Um, so we can just go through. Yeah, go through and kind of show I mean, how I you're using be it. Beginning with the delays, I use these uh, Strymon timelines because they can do a million different things. Yeah. And you can program them so you've got all your presets. So like, you know, I have a specific setting for. Let's see. You go. I usually go. Now I've been doing messing around a little bit with like stereo delays, you know. Mm. So I use that dual setting, but um, generally I have like 400 milliseconds kind of light. Yeah. Then I have like 400 milliseconds a little heavier, you know, a little more, you know, more feedback, Trails. more mix, yeah. you know. Um, just as like those, I just kind of go to settings, you know. And then when you go through it, like there's a slap that I don't use so much now because I'm using the deco more for the All slap right. thing. But then you go, it's all kind of labeled by song. So walk, you know, that's one of our songs. At the beginning, you know, I have a sort of, it's, you yeah. need a specific sound for it, right? Here, I guess I could demo that a little bit. So. All that stuff, you know, it has to be, has to be the same every night. So that's, that's, you know, that's how it is in this thing. So then the next one's rope, you know. So you can't like when we go into that song, you can't be like, "Oh wait, what?" You know, like, <laughs> "Oh, that's not cool. That's a little slower, a little yeah. bit." You know, it's got to be like on point every night. And then Aurora, I already showed you, um, stacked actors. It just kind of goes on forever. Yeah, Rosemary is a song off Wasting Light that we haven't played in years, but I still have the setting in here, and on and on. You're so, ready to go. So I have that, it's pretty much set up the same on both, but this one goes through the effects loop of the Freedman, mm -hmm. and this one, there is no effects loop on the AC30, so that's just going straight into straight it. Straight into it. Um, but I have to have the two of them, you know, because depending on whether I'm, you know, I've got my little AB pedal here. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like I said, the other, big go-to is the EP boost when you just need that little extra something, that yeah, little extra sizzle, you know? <laughs> use the, I use that a ton. I'm a sucker for flanger and phaser. I've just kind of put that in songs all over the place, probably more than I should, but I love it, you know? And uh, for my flanger, I got the old, uh, it's not an actual old one, but you know, the classic MXR. Yeah, the reissue. The, for my phaser, I use the, the EVH one just because I think it looks cool. Yeah, I mean, it does. you know, and you can set it to the script thing, which I mean, I've never A-beat it with my regular orange. Old one. Phase 90, so I don't know if it actually sounds any different, but it looks like Eddie Van Halen's guitar. And that's, and the that's cool enough. part, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's all you need. Um, and you because know, that, it probably sounds like 5% better. Totally. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and as you know, <laughs> it makes me play exactly like Eddie Van Halen. Right. Um, <laughs> Uh, and then the Holy Grail I have for the reverb. Reverb is always dicey. It always feels like you've got way too much or nowhere near enough. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I have it marked for different songs in the set, you know, depending on if I'm kind of in a hot tone or, or not. Um, the Micropog. It's one of those ones. I, don't, I only ha use this for like one song but I try to slip it in as much as I can because it just makes you feel like you're like in Prince's band or something, yeah. you know what I mean? It's just you were riffing earlier and it was yeah. huge. Yeah. Oh wait, it's not on, hold on, let's... All 
I love that thing. Why, why can't I just do that all the time? <laughs> yeah, right. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, chorus. Classic boss chorus. Um, we use a lot of chorus here and there for that little extra extra bit of jingle jangle. And this is one of those Waza craft ones. Yeah. Um, this one, I just, I set the way I have it set here You're up the on day you. that I got it, and I've never changed it. Yeah, the, the Which seems to be a running theme <laughs> for most of my gear. I just find the tone and then the, set and it and forget the it. way I kind of leave it there. This uh, is, I freaking love this pedal, the JHS Muffaletta. Yeah. Because it's got like every Big Muff in there, you know, that they ever made. And, um, and it varies sometimes. You can see I have it marked out for this one. Yeah, as I say, where do you land on it? I, I had it, I landed on this one for a long time and then I switched to this one recently because I just like it. And usually if I'm gonna use that, I might use it on the Vox, but it sounds great if you go to the clean tone on the, the Freeman, uh, which is a beautiful clean tone. And then you put that thing in front of it, <laughs> wow. I love a Big Muff sound. It's Oof. great. And then to have like seven or eight of them on tap is yeah. pretty useful. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I like that it's got the volume knob because it seems like with those kind of uh, fuzz faces and Big Muffs and all those kind of really super duper fuzz tones, live it always feels to me like when you kick in them, you're, it compresses everything, makes everything quieter. Yeah. When you want with that tone, you want it to go like Kah! The whole reason you're crazy. doing it is so right, people to, hear it. Right. And it seems like it takes it away. Mm. You know, so I like that, that that has the volume on there. I think the really only two or there's a few over on the right side. Oh, we yeah. got the deco. How are you using that compared to the timeline? The deco I have set you can do that thing where you set it so that it's like um like tape slap, mm. like wet dry tape slap. I forget how you do it. There's a thing you got to press two buttons at once and turn a knob. And yeah. Then it goes into that mode, and that's how I have it set. And I've pretty much been leaving that thing on like all the time. And you can see, so you can see I have it. There's not really, there's no real slap to it, but you can, you could have it that way. Yeah. Um, so you got that. I like to have it kind of right down the, right in line but it's wet dry, so yeah. it just gives it this like chorusy thing, you know, it's because each side's just a little bit different. It's just a little bit wide, just like yeah. almost like imperceptibly wide, Yeah. but, but it's there. <laughs> and then, and it, it was feeling like it was kind of making everything feedback, so I turned it off, but I pretty much keep the uh, tape saturation on most of the time too, because that's like just another little extra gain yeah. stage, you know? Let's see. It feels like it gains it up a little bit and like 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 kind of tightens it. Like up in focuses a weird way. it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so that's nice. And then um, the uh, uh, the uh, I don't remember what they get. What is that? A KTR? KTR yeah. yeah. I mean, I always call it my Klon, even though it's I guess it's not a Klon, but it's but it is a Klon, right? It's yeah. the same guy. So um, yeah, I put that generally in front of the Vox. Um, got a tuner. I don't know what this thing does, but my tech tells me I have to have it here. <laughs> yeah, I think um, it somehow controls or switches between the amps, <laughs> guessing by yeah. its labels. Yeah, and uh, um, and this is just my channel changer for the for the Friedman okay. to go between hot and and and, uh, and clean. Then this little uh, this is the same company Exotic that makes the EP Boost. This is their compressor pedal. And I had that on there when we were doing some of those Bee Gees songs. Oh yeah, because that's I was right. using a kind of a clean tone, and I felt like it like just gave it a little, you know, I don't know, it just took it into like '70s yeah. funk sound a little bit more. You know what I mean? That compress, yeah. Yeah, and uh, and I was using my Strat with that usually when we would play it, so that was nice. I haven't used that in a while, so that'll probably go the way of the Dodo here soon, unless those songs wind up back in the set someday. And then this is just a good wah wah pedal, which. I sort of go between, uh, that's on there because of the, the Bee Gees song too, because one of those songs I had to go like a waka 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 yeah. for the whole time. But most of the time with the wah wah pedal, I don't do a lot of like wah wahing. I click it on for a guitar solo and leave it like a half cock wah. Yeah. You know, like the Mick Ronson yeah. you know, kind of thing. Um, so I will also sometimes use those waffle pedals, mm. you know, which you just, you just set it where you want it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that kind of, toggle between those two. 
And that's pretty much the whole board. Man, it's a, it's, it appears like a lot, especially for someone that doesn't have a pedal background, although that was 20 some years ago. Yeah, yeah. But it, it is, everything seems to serve a purpose. Yeah. Oh, and I guess we should talk about this oh, little yeah. strip here that, that controls it all because, um, you know, we had some nightmare moments one time playing Letterman. God, it was a total disaster where a pedal went out or something went out. And, um, you know, when you're in those moments and like you're on TV or you're just playing a show or whatever, it's like the band doesn't stop. Yeah. You stop and then your tech has to cut, run out and frantically try to figure out which little connector cable went out and all that thing. So this prevents that. So if something goes out, it doesn't take your whole system down, which is nice. Nice safety net. Yes. Well, but then there's like, you know, I can't tell you how many times I'm like drifting off live and then I have to like, oh, wait, and then I'm like, wait, and then you have to read all of it. Where's that goddamn thing again? <laughs> <laughs> so it can be a little, it's always a little confusing. There's always a lot of tap dancing going on because like you got to hit a flanger and a delay at the same time, but yeah. you can't, you know, unless you go like. Dude, like, yeah, the huge double stomp. Right, you know, <laughs> so, um, yeah, but it's fun. I love it. I love that my, you know, my role in, in Foos over the years has uh, to some extent become like the color guy, yeah. you know, in the tone 